sing 191. On the top of Mount Zion is a city and the earth with glory it doth feel. I shall look on its beauty Yeah. 
sing it for the preacher. When pangs of death seized on my soul, to the Lord I cried. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be tonight it would be we wander we wander we wander I wonder about a lot of things don't you but today I, I we wonder you can turn well, you turn to the scripture here while I'm, I've got to talk about this a little bit what we wonder about but Psalms 15 and verses number 1 we'll read here in just a few minutes but we wonder. You know, I, I wonder why people don't stay in the house of the Lord sometimes. Does any of y'all ever wonder that? I wonder why, you know, why they don't stay in the presence of the Lord. I, I don't know about you, but once I really felt the good presence of God, I just couldn't get enough. You know, I couldn't. Hunger for it. I like to sing the old songs of Zion. Amen. It, it it, it, I feel something from it, don't you? I've often wondered why people are so easily moved away from the Lord. Y'all ever wondered that? I've wondered that, haven't you? I've often wondered why uh, people deceive themselves sometimes. Amen. I, I, I say they're Christians, but there is absolutely no fruit of it. I've wondered that. Cuss like a sailor. Act like a world. There ain't no proof there, is it? The Bible tells me you know by your fruit. 
But I have two pieces of scripture here that I want to read you that kind of answer the question. Probably answer the question for a lot of things in this life. So if you want to stand for your reading of the word in Psalms 15 and 1. And it says, Who, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, that worketh righteously, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is con- contend- contended, contempt, okay. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not his money to usury nor taketh reward against the innocent. And if you got a pencil, underline this part. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Brother Raymond, would you thank God for the reading of the word? Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of James and the first chapter, and we're going to read from the 22nd verse to the 26th verse. You don't have to worry. I probably am not going to hold you here all night. James 1 and 22. Just say amen when you get ready, because I'd like for you to be there. All right. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to him beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his his deeds. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man religion is man's religion is in vain. Now these two pieces of scripture in a way sound much alike, but I'm here to tell you they're a whole lot alike. A lot more alike than they are apart. They have very much. In fact, when I read these two pieces of scripture, it tells me that it it tells me something. And it tells me that both of them have the same author, author and his name is God. As, uh, and it's because, you know, these things were written uh, close to a thousand years apart, but they essentially say almost exactly the same thing. And I want to show you how they do. One, of course, was written to the children of Israel, and the other written to the New Testament church, all right? Now, in Psalms 15, let's look right here just a minute. It starts with two questions and an answer. And that's the great thing about God's Word. It may ask some questions, but it always gives an answer. Somebody say amen. Always gives an answer. And right here it says, 
Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And if I could paraphrase that just a little bit, I took it like this. Who's going to stay in God's house? Who's going to abide in your tabernacle? Who's going to stay in God's house? Who, amen, the second one, amen, it says, who will dwell in the holy hill? In other words, who's going to dwell in his presence? Who's going to dwell with him in heaven? And I believe it begins to give us this answer to these two questions right here. It says, he that walketh uprightly. He that walketh uprightly. That doesn't walk like the world walks, but walks like the word of God tells them to walk. He that worketh righteously. In other words, he that works to do what's right in their lives. And what, what is what's right? What's right in here, is that right? Not only he that walketh uprightly, not only he that worketh righteously, and I'm just going down that list right there real quickly, but he that speaketh the truth in his heart. Not them that tell people what they want to hear, but speak the truth. Then them that don't fly around, you know, trying to get their way, but speak the truth. And, and we need to do it in love because that's what the Bible tells us to do, isn't it? He that's not a backbiter with his tongue. That, that's who. That, that is who is it, going to stay. And, and it's not why you think here in just a minute. I don't want you to get tied down with what I'm telling you right here. There is something here in a minute that causes somebody to do these things. Okay? And that is the answer to the question that doesn't do evil to his neighbor. My Bible tells me to love my neighbor. How about you? I don't want to do evil to myself, do you? You know, it says, He that honoreth them that fear the Lord. I want to do that, don't you? Why? Because the Bible teaches me to do that. Is that right? He that sweareth to his own hurt. And what does that kind of mean? You, you know, brother... In other words, he that says when he'll do something, will do it even when it costs him something. When you say that you'll do something, you're going to do it even when you don't want to do it, and it costs you to do it. Or you're going to do what God tells you to do, whether you want to do it or whether you don't want to do it. He that putteth money to the usury. That means to go get interest. I don't mean don't think we're not supposed to get interest, but, but we are supposed to put it towards God's work too. And we are supposed to remember the poor. Do you know how many verses there is in here about the poor? And what promises there is if you will remember the poor? There's a lot of them in there. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. In other words, you don't use people and lie. A lot of people take the innocent. Somebody say amen. And use them today. So the answer is this. Those that do these things that the Word tells them to do. Look in verses 5 of Psalms 15. It says, He that putteth not out his money to the usury, nor taketh the reward against the innocent, he that does these things. He that does these things. He that does these things, and right here is a bonus. He that does these things are going to abide in the tabernacle of the Lord, and they shall dwell in the holy hill. He that does these things, but there's a bonus to that. Not only is he going to not only is he going to abide in the house, in the tabernacle, and dwell in the holy hill, but he shall never be moved. He shall never be moved. He that doeth these things. Now we're going to go over here and tie in James 1 and 22 and look and see what it says. 
the very first verse. But he, but ye, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. You see, brother, who is it that's going to stay in the house of the Lord or shall abide in his tabernacle? Who is it that's going to dwell in the presence of God? Amen. Or stay in God's presence or abide in his holy house? Who is it that's going to do that? Who is it that's not going to be moved? Them that's not just hearers, but doers. Them that's not just hearers, but doers. You see, there's a lot of difference between a hearer and a doer. There's a whole lot of difference. I, I'm here to tell you, when we hear some of the things in this Word of God, we just want to be a hearer. Y'all ever feel that way? You just want to be a hearer? Yeah. But there's some things in here, I don't much want to be a doer. Do you? But brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, we can't pick and choose what we're going to hear and let run out the other ear and what we're going to hear and what we're going to do. What we're going to do. But now here's another part. Now I told you, I, I don't know how long, it may not be long at all. Let's read down down here. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. How many of y'all ever read the Word of God and you just see all the good or the bad in your life? It'll show you all about yourself, won't it? Isn't that right? That's what he's talking about. Being a hearer and not a doer, you read this and you like you behold yourself in a glass, but then you go on and forget what you look like. Somebody say amen. And not a doer, he is like a man beholding himself in the natural glass, for he beholdeth himself and go his way instead of God's way. And go his way. Makes a choice to be a hearer instead of a doer. To be a hearer instead of a doer. And when he makes that choice to be a hearer instead of a doer, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see, you can be a hearer and a doer, and then a hearer and a not doer, from what that tells me right there. But boy, there's some good news. We'll skip on down to the 25th verse. No, we're not skipping. That's right where we're at, I think. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. In other words, they continue to make that choice. I'm going to hear the word and I'm going to do the word. I'm not going to hear the word and behold it and see myself and then go my way. Because then I'm going to forget who I am, who I was, is what it's saying. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deeds. So if you and I today, if we will make a choice not to just be a hearer. Because it's easy to hear. How, how many of y'all ever heard a message and you said, man, that's what I need to do? You ever heard that? I've heard that, ain't you? you? The Lord convicted your heart and you said, you know what, I need, man, I need to do that. If I could just do that. You've heard that. And there's times you've heard them and you become a doer. And then they sometimes, you know what you did? You was just a hearer. You decided, well, <laughs> you know. Eh. Well, you know, I... 
You know, God understands. I'll just do it my way. I'll just go my way. I don't care if the map tells me to turn right. You know, I'm going to go right straight on into it. This is why people don't stay in the house of the Lord. Because they don't learn to go beyond hearing and become doers. Or they don't continue to be a hearer and a doer. I've seen it too many times. That's the reason that you get easily moved when the Goliaths stand before you or the Red Seas are out about you. That's the reason that so many people deceive themselves today and say, oh, what a good Christian I am, but there's no fruit in it. And if you talk to them 15 minutes, you'll hear four or five cuss words. And from the abundance of their heart, their mouth speaketh. So what their heart's on ain't nothing about God. That's the reason that their deeds are not blessed. Remember the last part of that verse? That's the reason everything's going upside down for them. You see, you and I must continue. It's not what we were yesterday. How many of y'all ever been a long way away from where you was yesterday? Wait a minute, I got to get my balance. I'm getting older. <laughs> How many of y'all ever looked up and found yourself a long way away from where you was yesterday? And why was that? Because you wasn't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Y'all can say, Amy, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't. We wonder why today. I can tell you why. Because people need to be hearers of the word and doers of what they hear. Not hearers and go on their way. Because that's what we are so often do. That's all right. You can say amen. You're guilty like I am too. Go ahead. Amen, Brother Jimmy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Why? Why? I'm... I'm going to continue. That means going on the same way that I, that I should in God, continuing. I want to continue to hear. I want to continue to pick up this word. I want to continue to let it cut me and mold me and shape me, amen, to that, that my walk is uprightly, that my work is righteous, that when I speaketh, I speak of the truth of heart, that I'm not a backbiter with my tongue. Praise the Lord that I don't do evil to my neighbor. Amen. That I honor them that fear the Lord. Amen. That, that I'll do what I say I'm going to do even if it costs me. Praise the Lord. That I don't use nobody nor lie. And if I do them things, amen, if I let this tell me to do them, it's the letting this, it's begin the doer that does it. Do you understand that? Then I'll stay and I'll abide in the tabernacle of God or the house of God. Amen. You know what? I'll dwell in his holy hill. Praise God, I'll dwell in his presence. You know, that's, God abided in Zion, did he not at that time? Isn't that what it said? And glory to God, I, I want to abide in his presence, don't you? 
I'll not be deceiving myself, and I'll not be easily moved. You see, the, the reason is, is because if you just stay a hearer and not a doer, then you know what happens? The Word of God is sharp as a what? Two-edged sword. Cutting even to the marrow and to the bone and to the what? The intents of the heart. Is that right? So as we sit under the Word of God, it cuts us. And if we're just hearers, glory to God, and we hear it, and it's a cutting, we say, ouch, oochie, oh, that stings. I don't like that too well. It ain't much consolation to it, but there's a lot of conviction to it. And then we walk out the door, and glory to God, then we decide, well, I'm just going to go my way. What's that verse in there talk about going my way? He that beholdeth himself in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. Forgets. Don't put God in the place he needs to be. One. Forgets. And when they forget, then they come back the next week and it's... And, it, and you ain't going to sit there and get beat over the head forever. You either going to change or try to change or glory to God, you're going to say, I, man, you know, I don't like the way he spits and yells and carries on. And glory to God, I don't like this. And you know they sing too loud. Or they, you know, the pew ain't soft enough. Or you, praise God, the bathrooms wasn't clean. Or you know, I'm going to find some reason. Or it's just too long. Glory to God, they appreciate me over yonder. You and I today, let's be better doers. Let's make up in our mind. There ain't a person here today that tells me they do all the time. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Because I'll be honest with you, these days I do pretty good, and then these days I don't do so good. And I look up and I say, ooh, and I have to kick myself. I'm getting where I can't get my foot up that high no more. I'm going to pull a muscle in here. Y'all ever have to kick yourself? But when you and I hear the word and say, okay, how's that apply to me? What I need to do? We don't say, boy, Sister Shirley needs some fixing. Look at here, look at here. I believe I'll shine that old road hair while. You just need to keep that to yourself. You've got plenty of work to do, I guarantee it. You just shine it right in here where you can see all about yourself and your walk and you'll do right good. I'm telling you right now, when you go a coon hunting, you don't be looking around everywhere. You'll trip over a root and end up down at the bottom of a hill. You keep that coal miner's light right there focused right between the eyes. If you want to read Deuteronomy chapter 11, you'll get some insight in that. <laughs> It'll be the fork right there. And praise God, if you'll keep it right down there on your feet, you'll be a lot less likely to end up down at the foot of the hill of the valley and a whole lot more likely to stay on top of the mountain. Yes, I am preaching to the choir. And I know that. But the Bible says, take heed least he let it slip. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but sometimes I let too much slip. Could you make me feel a little bit better and agree with me anyway? That's right, ain't it? 
So I tell you what we want, what I want you to do with me tonight. I want you to pray for your brother and your sister and yourself and everybody, me included. I want you to pray for all because we all, we all need to be a little bit better doers and not just hearers. And let us pray. Listen, let us pray for them young ones. Let us pray for them that's going through the valley and, and all confused and they've got a Goliath before them and a Red Sea and Praise God, instead of turning where they need to turn, they turn all to their way. Because that's when they fall. That's when they get moved. That's when they get deceived and start thinking they're okay. Here we go. Let us all stand.